Good morning everyone. Very blessed Sunday morning to you. Thank you for listening in today. Let us start our service today by praying the collect for the week. Let us pray. O Sovereign God, Jesus Christ established your reign on earth. Let its coming be like the mustard seed that grows into greatness and like the leaven that mixes with the grain until the whole becomes greater to the praise of the one holy and blessed Trinity who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Eddie Blau, who works our security and our maintenance, is our what we call a verger at the church, and I asked him to read our gospel lesson for today. So thank you, Eddie. Uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 31 to 33 and 44 to 52. The parable of the master's seed. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like this. A man takes a master's seed and sows it in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it grows up, it is the biggest of all plants. It becomes a tree so that birds come and make their nests in its, in its branches. The parable of the yeast, of the yeast, so. Jesus told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like this. A woman takes some yeast and mixes it with 40 liters of flour until the whole batch of dough rises. The kingdom of heaven is like this. A man happens to find a treasure hidden in a field. He covers it up again and is so happy that he goes and sells everything he has and then goes back and buys that field. Also the kingdom of heaven is like this. A man is looking for fine pearls and when he finds one that is unusually fine, he goes and sells everything he has and buys that pearl. Also the kingdom of heaven is like this. Some fishermen throw their net out in the lake and catch all kinds of fish. When the net is full, they pull it to shore and sit down to divide the fish. The good ones go to, into their buckets, the worthless ones are thrown away. It will be like this at the end of the age. The angels will go out and gather up the evil people from among the good and will throw them into the fiery furnace where they will cry and grind their teeth. Do you understand these things? Jesus asked them. Yes, they answered. So Jesus replied, This means then that every teacher of the law who becomes a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who takes new and old things out of his storeroom. Hear the word of the Lord. Jesus teaches us a couple of things about his kingdom. And the kingdom of God is something really special. It's about a relationship with the Lord, living and being close to Jesus, mindful of his presence with us. We often said how we try to teach people to pray. But you see, prayer is really a state of being more than the words that we actually say. And that state of being is constantly, subconsciously at times, but being aware of God's presence, Christ's presence in our own lives. You see, our lives become a form of prayer when we live and try to continue to uphold that constant relationship with Jesus Christ, literally sitting at the feet of Jesus. And every day as we encounter the world, people, and all that we do within our own world, to be mindful that we are with the Lord and God's presence is with us in His Son, Jesus Christ. The Kingdom of God is also for us a teaching. A teaching about the great things of God's eternal life that he is offering us when we die. But God's kingdom, as Jesus so often preached in his time here on earth, was that the kingdom of God was among us. Because God's living presence is with us. God is not bound by time like we are. God is beyond time. And so time is meaningless actually to God. It's only an earthly concept because our world turns around itself on its own axis and does an elliptical journey around the sun. And this determines the hours, the seconds, the days, the years. One day that might all come to an end. But time exists on earth only and does not exist actually in space. 
God is beyond time and God's kingdom is beyond just what we experience here on earth. The things of God are eternal. They were before the earth was even formed and they will be eternal after even the things of the earth come to stop being. But God's presence and God's love with us as human beings is with us every moment when we turn to him. And you see that kingdom when we come to that realization that we are made to be God's special children. We are made to have fellowship and relationship with God himself. In the perfection of his son, Jesus Christ, we live our lives differently and our attitudes are changed. We are challenged daily by different people's attitudes within our world. And we are told by politicians, by moral teachers, by other people, what we should do. What is the latest fashions? How we should be? And we are told and governed and controlled. But for us to truly live in God's kingdom means we live under the direction of God and under the response of Jesus Christ himself. And you see, the kingdom is said to be so important to people. Jesus gave us these parables to show the incredible importance of it, that when we find that kingdom of God, it becomes more precious than anything that we could ever try and actually possess. It is sought after that the man will sell everything he has in order to buy that one exceptional thing. What level of passion do we actually have for God's kingdom and our own relationship with Jesus? It's so easy to get on with our lives and run around and do the things that we do, or maybe just walk around. But still, there is always that time, that chance that we miss God completely. And some days we may not even think about God and God's presence with us. But God is never far from us. And he is always with us if we become mindful of his presence and live in his kingdom. And it really is interesting at the end of that gospel reading. We so often see that the lawyers and the scribes and the people who were so well educated in the old scriptures. That Jesus seems to attack them so often. And the things that they were doing were so bad and were so wrong. But in this teaching that we hear today in the gospel reading. We find that Jesus is talking directly about the Jewish scribes. Those that then come who have studied the Old Testament and they've come to understand about Jesus and what he is offering them and how great is the wealth of their experiences coming out of their Jewish faith and their knowledge of the Old Testament, which they can then bring and interpret into the New Testament. This was the new coming of the new covenant and Jesus was preparing the people by telling them this for those that would come. We often think that the Jews were against Christianity, but not so. Jesus' disciples were Jews. Jesus himself lived a perfect Jewish life. And on the day of Pentecost, thousands that were there, over 3,000 people, majority of them probably were Jews. We and our Christian faith goes back into Judaism. I don't believe that God ever intended it to be a different religion, but a completion or a fulfillment or just upholding the promises that God had made to us in the Old Testament. But God's relationship with human beings changed after Jesus' death and resurrection. And it is only right that we call it a new covenant, a new testament, a new beginning, and a new creation. God recreated human beings with himself. So where does this gospel reading of today really tell us? Well, I love the way it speaks about that this person that has come to accept the kingdom of God takes out old things and new things out of their storeroom. Special things of the past, which are common and well known, are still used, but there are new things that come out. And during the time of COVID, we're all living differently, behaving differently, trying to do things differently, some of us surviving better than others. And it did come to me, what are we doing with our storerooms? Some of us are cleaning and tidying up and getting rid of a lot of stuff that we don't really need. Others of us are preparing other things and putting things in order. And what are we doing? You see, our storerooms could perhaps be likened to our minds and to our hearts. What are the things that we hold in our hearts during this time of COVID virus? What are the things that we hold within our minds? Are they the things of God or the things of the earth? What do we truly hold on to? What is becoming precious to us and what should we, under the guidance of God in the power of God's Holy Spirit, be actually saying 
it is time for me to let go of this or to move or to change. You know, before the lockdown, when we would go and visit somebody else in their homes, sometimes we visited other people in their homes many times. You know, but very seldom was I ever given that opportunity that people came and opened all their cupboard doors to come and say, come and have a look what I've got in my cupboards. What is behind those closed doors? And quite frankly, probably I really wouldn't want to know what is in some people's cupboards. But what is it that we bring out of our cupboards to show to the world? What is it that we show to the other world of our discipleship to Jesus? And what do we do with the message of Jesus Christ? Just keep it locked in a cupboard? Or do we share the joy of knowing God with other people? Because God can change their lives for the better and offer people eternal life. We as human beings, whether we like it or not, are all human beings in this world. We are all made by the same one God. We might be different, we might look different, we may speak differently, but all of us will become before God one day. All of us are brought to that same level of being human. God is big enough to embrace the differences within us, of our cultures, of our likes, of our looks, of the things that we do. We as humans like to judge others, but God sees beyond all of that to seeing us for who we are is true. If we are truly going to be God-minded people and kingdom-focused people, we will focus on all people and see the greatness of all people belonging to God. For people are God's. It's not up to us to judge. It's not up to us to try and look down on other people just because they might be different from what we are. Let us give people the right to be different because God made them that way. God created them and they live and have a right to choose as to what they become in God's kingdom. Let us know that our God's kingdom is not a maybe one day thing into the future. Yes, our completion of our salvation will be completed when we die and leave this earth to be in God's eternal kingdom. But we can experience the kingdom of God among us now if we live and obey the things that Jesus taught us. And Jesus' greatest thing that he taught us was to fulfill the teaching of the book of Leviticus, to love other people, love our neighbor as we love ourselves, and to love our God. When we put God first, when we truly put Jesus Christ and the way in which Jesus would deal with things first, and we are listening to the working of God's Holy Spirit guiding us and put effort into that spiritual relationship, God does teach us. He molds us. He forms us. He cleans out the cupboards of our hearts and our minds and fills them with things of God. And I'm so glad that God has built and given us the scriptures. It's like a huge big cupboard filled with wonderful treasures, some old, some new. But as we engage with the word of God, God reveals new treasures. God will bring out old treasures to us, but God will also bring out newness and freshness and new things. That's why the Bible has to be so big. It has to last us the whole of our lives. And it has so much that God can teach us if we are working with our Lord and listening to him and living in the kingdom of God. And so let us be people that are assured of our faith in Jesus Christ. And let us take courage to hold on to the things that God has taught us. And let us return to our Bibles. Let us read the scriptures. Let us read the New Testament and get to know Jesus all over again. Let us get to know the wisdom that God reveals to us in the New Testament of how people live as kingdom-minded people, people of God. Let God clean our cupboards, our thoughts, our hearts, and our feelings of love towards other people, and our feelings of love towards God. And let us be renewed and rejoice in spite of COVID being around and the mess up it's caused of our normal lives. Let us know that with God, the old is still good. Our old is still great because God is beyond all of it and God feels our anxieties, our fears and our pain. And let us hold on to our God rather than those fears and pain about the COVID virus. Let us rejoice in knowing our Lord and let us celebrate his presence in our own lives and us belonging to him and living in his kingdom. Amen. Let us pray. God, we give ourselves to you. 
We know you, Lord Jesus, gave yourself utterly and completely to us here on this earth to literally take away our death in order that we pass through death into the glory of your eternal kingdom. So strengthen that faith in us that we know we are your disciples. And Lord, may you open up your kingdom and let us have the courage to pray to let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Let us rejoice in knowing you this day, Lord God, and let us know that you are greater and stronger than our greatest fears. And so, Lord, let us commit ourselves to you and live this day in the knowledge and peace of knowing you, because, God, you live within our lives. We pray, God, for our country. We pray for protection upon those that are vulnerable. We pray, Lord, for an end to the COVID virus. We pray for a medical response. We pray for medical people that function and work within our own country to bring relief and healing to those. We pray, Lord, that you will strengthen those that are ill and that you would comfort those who have lost loved ones during this time of COVID. But assure us, Lord God, of your greatness, the power of the resurrection in Jesus Christ and the greatness of your compassion that we can experience day by day. Make us better, Lord God, to open our hearts and minds as if to open a new closet to you, that you can fill us with your goodness, with all your teachings through your scriptures, to give us new direction, new hope, and new certainty in you alone. And so we pray for our country. We pray for every town, every village, every city. We ask your hand of blessing and protection upon all your people. God bless this nation. Be with those that have lost income, those that are struggling so much financially, and those that are struggling just to find enough food. We pray, Lord, for answers. We pray for a mighty outpouring of your goodness, your great blessing, and your grace upon our country. Fill us, Lord, with that knowledge of your presence. And God, may we ask that you do something miraculous to help our country and your beloved people. Bless us into this week. And let us go in that faith and certainty of your love and care with us this day. Amen. Take care, people, and let us rejoice in this day, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Bye-bye. Give us peace.